to ensure that we are live. There we go. I'm pretty sure we are. Hang on. Yeah. And yeah, it's like a little it. bit delayed, but here, let me check. Let me refresh it. I'll probably hear feedback in a second, but mm. oh, yeah, we are live. Okay, cool. So, Yay. all right. Hey, everyone. So let me put on my radio voice that I apparently have forgotten after working in radio <laughs> for years. But hey, everyone, welcome <laughs> to today's live stream. I am here with my friend, Daniel Aleman, whose book Indivisible comes out one week from today. We will cover exactly how he is feeling. But anyway, <laughs> how are you? How is your day? How is everything? <laughs> I am good. Like you said, I am starting to feel the pressure of the one week mark, but I'm super, super excited and super grateful Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It, it's It's been awesome, like getting to have our friendship blossom this way. But so anyway, let's just jump right in. So can you tell us what Indivisible is about completely in your own words? You don't have to give me an elevator pitch unless you completely want to. You can ramble as much as you want. <laughs> Of course. So Indivisible is a story about a Mexican-American teenager in New York City, and he is a big Broadway enthusiast. Um, he dreams of becoming an actor one day, and his life and his plans for the future are interrupted when his parents, who are undocumented immigrants, are detained by immigration authorities. And suddenly, Mateo is left to care for his little sister, and he needs to keep life as normal as possible for her and also try to figure out a way to reunite his family. And so I like to say that Indivisible is, you know, a very emotional story. At the end of the day, this is a book about immigration and about family separation, but it also has so many moments of warmth and even humor. And, you know, some of the themes that you can find in the story are friendship and of course, family and going after your own dreams and first love. And what I what I love most about it is that this is a story about the unbreakable bonds that bind us to the people we love and about learning to ask for help when you need it and about community. And I don't know, it's just a book about many things. I used Fantastic. Because I remember, I think it was when it was announced, like probably about a year ago, maybe or so. I remember seeing the Publishers Weekly screenshot on Twitter and I'm like, what why why do i why why do we have to wait a year <laughs> like, I'm like, I it's been two years believe it why? believe it or not it's been two years since we announced no. it's been a long long time and i'm so grateful for you know the fact that you've been following the journey for mm -hmm. for this whole time it's been it's been so lovely thank you for a very long time and because of this comment right here that's from my friend kara she says Broadway is like a bat signal for Melissa, and she is correct. <laughs> <laughs> she is correct. So do you mind if we jump down to the Broadway question we have? Of course, yes. Okay, awesome. So Mateo loves Broadway. I do too. Uh, yes. So what is your favorite musical and why? My favorite musical is Wicked. I absolutely adore it. I've seen Wicked, and I'm not even kidding, about seven or eight times. Wow. And yeah. It's, it's, I, you know, when given the choice between seeing any musical or Wicked for the ninth time, I will probably say Wicked for the ninth time. That's how obsessed I am. Um, it was the first show that I ever saw. It was the first Broadway show. I think I must have been around 13 or 14 when I went. And it just blew my mind. Like it opened my mind to just theater and to just a whole new form of storytelling. And, I, I don't know, like the, the story really resonates with me. It, it's like about friendship and about feeling different and about, you know, um, going after, after like being ambitious and going after your objectives. I, I don't know, I just adore this story. And something interesting about theater too that I love is um, the two act structure because most Broadway shows have this two act structure. And that is something that I utilize in my own writing. Um, I like, like in Indivisible, there's a full like part one with its own story arc and its own like climax. And then it ends and you think like, well, what could possibly happen next? And then there's act two and it begins all over again. And it's just this whole other, you know, side of the story um, that needs to be told. And I, I just love Broadway and theater so awesome. much. And I want to hear your favorite Broadway movie. Okay, my favorite, well, first of all, <clears throat> before when you were talking about the two-act structure, how it each has a climax and everything else, 
like I immediately thought of Into the Woods, where in the first yeah, act, every, it, everyone goes exploring, it's all fun and exciting, and then in the second act, everyone's like, wait, hang on, we have to e experience the consequences of what we're at. Exactly, <laughs> so, totally. But it also, totally. like I just remember seeing an open air production of it, I think like in the summer of 2019, and it was raining. So we were in this oh tent and the act and there's no backstage. So the actors had to run in and out of the tent. So they kept, kept running into the tent in various states of just being bedraggled. Oh my but God. they were having so much fun. It was fantastic. <laughs> and I'm the two princes, Rapunzel and um, who's the other one? R like uh, Cinderella. What, Cinder Rapunzel and Cinderella's princes. They 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 completely stole the entire show. Completely. Oh my gosh. It was beautiful. But my favorite musical. Well, Kara is not. Well, Kara is not incorrect. Um, I do love Hades Town. I do. I love Hades Town with every fiber of my being. However, my favorite musical of all time, and it has been this way since I was fifteen years old, is Fiddler on the Roof. I okay, nice. I love Fiddler on the Roof so much. I remember I was listening to a podcast that was oddly enough about is about Ninety Day Fiance, and they got on the topic of Fiddler on the Roof, and. One of them described it as one of the podcast hosts described it as it's all about home, and I'm like, that's exactly that's exactly what it's about. It's I, I love Fiddler on the Roof so 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 much, and I if there is any YA book surrounding a production of Fiddler on the Roof written by a Jewish author, publishing make that happen, M make that happen. <laughs> that please. sounds amazing. Give that it, would be give incredible. It to me. Please, I need that in my life. And or you should you should write something like it because it it would be incredible. Something. So like <laughs> I, I would never I would never touch Fiddler on the Roof because I'm not a Jewish person, so I would leave I, that I get to it. someone who is I see, Jewish. Totally. Oh, a hundred percent. But it's like I love. I just adore Fiddler. Hundred percent. With every fiber of my being, I love it so much. I love how it's equal parts funny and heartbreaking and warm, and at the heart of it is just this Jewish man who wants his family to live the best life possible and how he still loves God and believes in God, but he wishes that God would make things easier for his family because he loves them so much. I just, I love, I love it. So totally. I love it so much. Oh my God. <laughs> I, lo I love it so much. I and love just, musicals in general and just theater it's so amazing i can't wait until it's safe to go back because i totally. miss it i miss it so much and i know that um that the hudson valley shakespeare festival which is like my local shakespeare festival they they're making plans to come back this summer and i'm so excited because that I'm will be amazing them. what they do is they're they're by west point so you have this amazing overlook of the hudson river and you're invited to come on to the gardens where they are beforehand and just have a picnic just bring whatever you want and have That's a picnic so in, nice. these, in these beautiful gardens and it's it's just awesome because you have a really wonderful afternoon outside and then you go under a tent and you watch and you watch Shakespeare or Into the Woods because Into the Woods was their very first musical and they killed it they killed it so it's it's oh. no there's no reason to believe that yeah. they won't just keep succeeding and I'm so excited <laughs> That sounds incredible. And so hang on, let's move on <clears throat> to question, to technically question two, because we are, no, technically it's question three, but because we, we covered that, <laughs> we covered Broadway anyway, just we're to finish reading this, the, or the entire order, it's fine. So you're a debut author, congratulations. Your book Thank comes you. out in exactly one week. How, how are you feeling? Like, what are your emotions? <laughs> Well, I was telling you earlier, um, I feel like I have my moments, like I have moments of just pure calm and I'm like, oh yeah, not much is going on. And then I have moments of a lot of excitement and I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait. I'm so happy and so excited. And then I have like freak out moments. Like I've woken up in the middle of the night at least a couple of times in the past couple of weeks no. being like, oh my God, it's coming so soon. Um, but ultimately like, through the you know mix of emotions, I would say that I'm happy and I'm grateful, and it's been such a long journey that it's just it's so incredible to be so close, and I'm so 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 excited to share this story. Awesome, because I'm I'm so excited for you, and I can't wait for when. Because are you going to be going into? 
I'm not sure if you're doing like, in, obviously in-person events aren't a thing right now, but are you going to be going into bookstores and looking for copies of it? Because like, not, is that going to so, happen? That is a very sad thing because right now in Toronto where I am, we are almost like on lockdown, like retail oh, is closed. No. And oh, so no. that is like a lifelong dream. Like mm-hmm. I've dreamt my whole life of walking into a bookstore and finding my book on the shelves. And so for right now, it can't happen. But I am very happy to have friends who, you know, I'm going to ask people to go to bookstores and try to get their photos of it, whether at the bookstore or in their own home. Just like being invisible mm-hmm. out in the world will be so, so, so special. Yeah. And I know eventually I will get like in a You're few gonna weeks, get the- um, to go in just when it's safe and that's yeah important. and that's totally. gonna be a huge thing for you because like i i remembered seeing um a video like around i think last february i, I want to say it was when uh, the gravity of us by phil stamper came out and mm. walked into the the as someone who's been in new york you obviously know the union square barnes and noble that three floor barnes that three floor barnes and noble in union square he went oh and yeah they, yeah which you can, which I, I know I knew exactly what Barnes and Noble it was because I'm like it's slightly narrower to accommodate for the height I get this so so he went in there and he saw the gravity of us he 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 did he his husband filmed him walking over to it and picking it up and I'm just like I'm not gonna be composed like <laughs> like like it's like like it like like if that ever happens to me I'm never gonna be composed at all so when totally. it, when it happens for you. Like I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited. I can't wait. And so, since you said you've you've had this dream for all of your life, like when did you start writing specifically? So I I can't even remember the exact moment when I started telling stories because even before I started actually writing, I just I just told stories. Like I would. Um, make little drawings and I would tell my mom the story behind the drawings. It's just storytelling has been a part of who I am forever. And I think I must have started writing um, short stories when I was like seven or eight years old. I remember in my old house in Mexico, um, we had like our big computer and I used to sit there for hours at a time just typing out my little short stories and of course, they were really bad. They were written by a seven-year-old, but I would dream um, of publishing one of these one day. And then I think I started writing um, like novels, like full-length novels by the time I was a teenager. And for the longest time, even though I did have that publishing dream in the back of my mind, like for the longest time, I just wrote for myself. Like I would write book after book and story after story just because I loved it so much and just because it was my favorite thing to do during evenings or weekends. And I started trying to find an agent, I think around age 20. And I had finished a book that I really loved and it was a YA and I felt like it was, um, I don't know, I was really happy with it. And I started pitching it to agents and of course, I was very um, clueless about how the whole process works at the time. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to get some offers like after this one round of queries. And of course, it's like, it's hard. It's it like, works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's not how it works. And it takes, I think it takes most of us a little while to like understand exactly, you know, how the publishing landscape works. And how to, you know, deal with rejection, because that is such a huge part of the industry. And it can also teach you so much, I think. But yeah, like I I first book, and I'm kind of getting into another one of our questions, which Mm -hmm. is um, my querying journey, but I I can tell you about about it. Um, My first book, I received zero interest, really. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I wrote I mean, it it happens. And looking mm-hmm. back, like, I do realize why. Like, I do realize, like, that book was not ready. And as mm-hmm. much as I loved the story, perhaps my writing just wasn't where it needed to be. Mm-hmm. And then I wrote another book. And I, again, really loved the story. And I started to get some Karen's interest. Correct. She's correct. It, it, Hollywood it, much. She, she, uh, she, because they tell you you can just send your manuscript to a publisher and get published yes, magically. Exactly. Totally. Just totally. look at the entire plot line, the entire publishing plot line of Jane the Virgin. It's oh, absurd. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. I, I, I remember. There's, there's a moment where Jane says, "Like 
she's publishing her book and she's like, yeah, and I invited a lot of literary agents and they're going to be attending. So maybe I'll get to sign with one of them at her launch event. And it's no. like, how, how, what? <laughs> no, 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 it, no, it doesn't work. No. And cause how she prints out, how she prints out physical copies to go just bring to it. I'm like, that's no. It's <laughs> is like, this, it's is completely this off. That's not, no, it's, it's, no, and it's like, oh, I've been querying for three weeks. I, I think I'm gonna, like, like, I, I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm done. I'm like, hey, did anyone, <laughs> did yeah. anyone research this process at all? <laughs> and plus, like, how her, whatever, like, her, like, um, like, how, at, like, the very end, her book sells at auction for five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> so I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> it is. I, I agree that the view we have from of publishing from you know movies and just as outsiders, like looking from the outside looking into publishing, like I feel like people just have no clue how it works. Yeah. Um. So it obviously did take me a little while to to learn that. Um. But then what was special about my querying journey, looking back, mm -hmm. um, because at the time, of course, it's like, it's, it's hard and it's a frustrating process to go through. But um, what was special was that I started to see progress. Like um, first book, no interest. Second book, I got a few full requests. And so I was like, okay, like I'm doing something right. Even though those full requests didn't turn into anything, I was moving in the right direction. And so I wrote another book, which was the third one. And I, I got so much interest with that one. Like I got so many requests. At one point I was like, one of these many agents have got to fall in love with it. And one of them has got to sign me. And I did come very close. Uh, there was one agent that I really admired and um, she read it. She loves it, but she like didn't think it was quite there yet. So she asked me for a uh, revise and resubmit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is my big chance. And so I took like five months to work on the revise and resubmit. I loved her notes. They really resonated with me and with the story. And so I sent it out to her. Oh, I sent it out to her. And um, I... I remember waiting just like for a few weeks, just like so nervous to see what she was going to say. And she got back to me after about a month saying like, I love the edits. I, I think you did a great job, but ultimately I just don't feel confident in my ability to sell this. Oh, and no. that was just so heartbreaking, but she invited me to send her my future work. And so I was like, okay, again, I can look back and learn something from this whole journey because I'm moving in the right direction. And Literally a week after I got that rejection from this agent, I started writing in the visible. And so, you, really you know, know, you never know. I, exactly. I, I know and the like, pain of the revise and resubmit too, because for the first book I ever queried when I was, I think, around 23, I had a revise and I got a revise and resubmit. I'm like, okay, I'm so close. I'm so close. I worked on the revise and resubmit for four months and she ultimately rejected it because of something oh. she didn't even outline in her two pages of notes. We even had a phone call. So I was, I, uh, when that happened, I, remember just being so emotionally destroyed I just sat I just flopped onto my bed and started just sobbing in like into my sheets <laughs> like, this it's, is... of course it's like no, it's... especially after you feel like you're getting so close and like you're being given this one big chance it can be so heartbreaking yeah. to get a no at that point it is mm -hmm. absolutely and, heartbreaking and then for my second one for my second book that I queried what happened with that was I had entered it into pitch wars I didn't get into pitch wars and so I was on the phone with my critique partner and I'm like I don't know what to do. And she was like, you have to write something else. And then a week, maybe a, maybe a couple of weeks later, I started writing You, Me, and Our Heartstrings. And that's the book that got me an agent. So like, you never know when your yes is coming at all, because that's just how publishing is. Totally. Because query your first book, you, you're going in with no experience. And then mm -hmm. when you query a second book, you're, you're going in with some more experience and you're going with a thicker skin and the rejections will be water off a duck's back sooner than they were with the first one. And then if you query a third book, like me, it like when you get your first rejection, you're like, okay, this, this hurts, but nah, 
it's fine. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, yeah. You've are you reached the point where you're just like, okay, this is how the industry works. The, the, these are the cogs in the machine. And totally. this is how you can, this is how you can deal with them. So honestly, like if, like, so if you had to give any advice to any querying people, I say this as my mentee for author mentor matches in the chat. Hi, Brittany. <laughs> I, say, I say this as we're getting her ready to query in a couple of months. So what if you had to give advice to everyone who's going to be querying, but specifically to Brittany, but also indirectly to everybody else, <laughs> <laughs> like what would your one piece of advice be? I think just going off of what you were just saying, like it's it's one of the hardest but most important things to learn throughout this whole journey is that rejection is a part of this industry. Like even the most successful of authors that you look that you may think of, they have been through rejection and they're still currently today experiencing rejection in one form or another. Yeah. And so I think as authors, we need to just really build this very thick armor where we where we learn from rejection, like where we don't take it personally, we we're able to admit like to accept like, maybe this story wasn't for that specific person, but there will be someone who does fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. I think that is just one of the biggest lessons. And it's one of the things that you it's, it's hard to learn until you're actually going through it. But I think just opening your mind um, to to that perspective um, of seeing rejection as, as something that is almost necessary and never personal and and that can teach you a lot and that can make you stronger. I think that is just something super, super important to, to keep in mind as you go into a querying journey. Mm -hmm. And also something that Kara highlighted over here, she said, this is why writers need other writers to give them confidence and yell at them. Because I yelled at Kara for a year and a half before she would listen to me. <laughs> and then she listened to me and she got an agent. So Kara, I was correct. So <laughs> I love you so much. And it's, and, um, cause like you need community going into this and Brittany mm. does have her community, but you, if you're querying or you're about to query, you can't do this alone because it's because doing it alone is a it's lonely, and b yeah. when you get rejections, you, you you don't have anyone to just hop onto a phone call or yeah. a Zoom call or or, or wherever. Yeah. With. and it's it, it's not healthy to keep your fear and your sadness inside you especially with querying because writing in and of itself it, it's solitary you're not you're, yeah. you're not you're, you're not being like hey like like let's sit and write our books together because a pandemic so we can't do that right now yeah and it's it, you, you can't and yeah it's naturally like an activity that you kind of got to do on on your own just you and the computer yeah. and or the people doesn't uh, have the to be that paper. way either yeah, and querying it doesn't. It's it's not something that has to be as solitary as writing because when yeah. you query, when you send off your first, when you send off your first query, if they respond in a week, cool. If they respond yeah. in three months, cool. If exactly. they never respond because a no response means no, for, because it, because every agency has different policies. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Mark it on yeah. your spreadsheet. Move on. Congratulations. It's yeah. Like, it, it, it's like and everyone's Let me tell you. Way. Like, let me tell you. For the longest time, I did do it on my own. Like, I didn't really have that writing oh. community around me oh when I first God. started, and that was. And it's funny because one of the themes in Indivisible, which is just something that is just a part of me and a part of what I'm trying to learn in general is just asking for help when you need it. And I feel like that that community and that ability to turn to a friend who is going through the same thing and who is also querying and also trying to put their work out there, um, the ability to do that and to just, you know, talk about it is super, super important. And it's something that I didn't really have at first, but now I really, really appreciate being, you know, having a community. Yeah, it, it, it's really helpful because you, you need everyone at different stages needs people because you're especially writers because you can't you can't you, again you can't just go through this alone. It's not something mm -hmm. that you can expect to be like, yeah, OK, I'll be fine completely on my own. It's, it's yeah, no, no. You, you, you need someone to talk to who understands publishing because my family, as much as I love them, 
they don't get it. <laughs> they don't get it at all. And, it, and, it's, and it's like when I'm fully vaccinated and when family's fully vaccinated and we can see each other again, I'm going to have to explain everything, everything about <laughs> how I got my agent because they, last time I saw them was probably like Christmas of 2019. So oh, it's wow. Like, so, so like, like at that point, I was still drafting you, me, and our heartstrings. Like, I hadn't, like, yeah, nothing. You, so, it's you've been through such a long process that they haven't really gotten to witness and to, mm, to be a, you know, to be aware of. No. And so, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. But, like, that's why I'm so grateful that, like, when we can find a community like how me and you've connected, it's, yeah. It, it, trust me, Brittany has her community, and I'm so happy that she does because I would be so worried for her if she was going into this, like, 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 like with just me, with just me. Yeah. I would just be like, yeah. I, I'm here for you as much as you need, but uh, like, I, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's no, a it's, it's hard, totally. It is a process. Um, and Brittany, also remember that, like, they focus on your craft and on working on the next thing. I think that. If you look at my querying journey as an example, like had I just put out my first book and felt like, oh my God, I got no interest and given up, like I wouldn't have gotten to share in the visible um, with the world. So just keep in mind, like you are more than one book and always look to, you know, your next project and always be craft focused, like always focus on growing and learning and becoming a better writer because as long as you're doing that nothing can stop you like eventually you will get to that one manuscript that people love yeah th yeah th th that's listen to him because <laughs> because it, it, it even if you don't get an agent with this first book it doesn't mean that 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 your first book is bad it doesn't mean exactly that. Granted, you're granted you grow with each book that you write because that's just the nature of how writing improves but yeah. also know that 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 you can just do whatever you want and eventually an agent is going to be like oh hi i love this can we arrange a time for a call and that's going to be a hugely momentous time it's gonna it's going to happen and you, the thing is with publishing you don't know when any of it's going to happen but just go in with the community and you'll be okay. Just yeah. listen, take take Daniel's advice and you'll be completely fine. And I'm so happy that you're brainstorming a new project because that's that's honestly what you need to do. And um, totally, Kara here is is dragging me because I ch she's calling me out for my slow burn romance. <laughs> Kara, K Kara, I I'm just gonna put that away. So it's like, <laughs> like, I'm not, like I'm not commenting. <laughs> Oh god, because she because she she read Heartstrings. I think when before I signed with my agent, she read Heartstrings and I am she, so excited to read was, it one day. She was yelling at me. One day, hopefully, people will read it. So or okay. So what is the most surprising thing you've learned on, on your journey to um on your journey to publication, what's the most surprising thing you've learned? And it, it, it so, can be multiple. So if you just want to, if you talk, want to talk about more of them too. I think it's like, I was thinking about this question earlier. And I think that what was most surprising was that there is no single point of arrival. And what I mean by that is as querying writers, we're used to thinking about, you know, the moment when you sign with your agent as, the the finish line as the moment when like it all starts to happen and it's true that that's a huge moment but then you're soon enough you're thinking about going on submission to publishers and then you think once i get the book deal that is it like i got to the finish line and then you're starting to think about editing the manuscript and promoting the book and then you're thinking uh, you publish the book i'm like one week away and it does feel like, a, again, a huge moment of, you know, a huge milestone, but I'm also thinking about book two, and I'm thinking about new stories that I want to put out in the world. And so it's funny how it's just such an ongoing process. And I think for that reason, it's also super important to celebrate the milestones. Like when you get an agent, 
celebrate as much as you can. When you sign a book deal, celebrate as much as you can. Because if we don't take our moments to feel proud of ourselves and to celebrate these big, big moments, um, I think it can become a, an exhausting process because there's always going to be something, just something new to look toward. And that was just what was surprising because I was very much under the impression of like, once I get that book deal, I'll be all set. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, now there's a ton of other things that you got to focus on and, and worry about and dream about. And, and that is just something that I wasn't really expecting going into this publishing journey. It makes complete sense because it's it's every single point is is, is a new thing. And it's mm -hmm. especially if you're a debut like you are, it's something you've never experienced. Because I remember totally. when I signed with my agent, we like I celebrated with like a chocolate raspberry cake and like and like my mom like 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 got like one of those like edible iron on things and she like put like a like a violin on the cake for me oh wow and just, nice. like, that is so cute so like just <laughs> when you get when you reach certain milestones in publishing honestly it's just take a moment to to be grateful for when you reach them yeah. because before you know it you're moving you're moved on to the next thing and because yeah. publishing has two speeds either really really slow or really really fast there exactly. is absolutely no in between <laughs> It, 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 it it's it's weird it's you, you get whiplash but eventually and the thing is you're 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 it, you're you're never done it's you're exactly. never done and i've heard people say like being a being an author is like having homework for the rest of your life like mm -hmm. for the like rest there's of your always life. <laughs> yeah for the like, rest of your life literally every night there may be something yeah just something to do like writing a new story or just focusing on the next big moment that you're trying to get towards. So it's, it's just an ongoing process. Yeah, it is an ongoing process. It's, it, it, it never stops either. So mm -hmm. it's, and you just have to just get used to stuff going. Cause I think also querying is a good example of when you can attune yourself to things being really, really slow or going really, really fast because I have, I've had friends who were querying for a really, really long time and then my, one of my critique partners, she she sent out a query to her agent and she got an email from her two days later saying, hey, can we set up a call? So it can go really, really fast or really, really slow. And as long as you're 100%. attuned to those speeds or rather like not speeds because slow, well, slow technically is a speed if you take the definition yeah. of speed. If you take it. If, you, if you're attuned to really, really slow movement or really, really fast movement, just get used to it now. And yeah, that, 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 that's our advice. Just, just trust us. And so moving on, what's over here? All right, we covered querying, we covered Broadway. So we covered, all right, we covered querying agents and things like that. So with Indivisible, which is releasing in one week, I'm so proud of you. I am so ready to get my copy. Thank you. Be coming on on release day because I, I bought it. I pre-ordered it through Bookshop, so it's going to be coming Yay. in a couple of days. But I am I'm so excited. Just if if y'all haven't already, go onto Amazon and read the look inside preview because I think Amazon <laughs> offers thirty or sixty pages, give or take. And yeah, just it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> we have bonded over the fact that we each know which McDonald's is mentioned in that book <laughs> so it's there's a mcdonald's mentioned in the book <laughs> yes, chapter two is. yeah chapter two and and it's specifically the two-story one in times square which so with all of the restaurants in times square if you choose to go to mcdonald's like you know like mateo does or like i have it's, it's okay. a certain choice it's okay yeah. <laughs> it's a choice <laughs> it's a choice but mm. So what is what are a few things that you hope readers take from Indivisible? I I you know what I think my favorite books are books that make me very emotional and that also inspire me and ultimately help me feel less alone. I those are the stories that just resonate with me the most. And so I really hope that Indivisible will help people feel all these things um it is as i mentioned like it is an emotional story but it also has so much warmth and so i i hope that people will feel inspired 
I hope that, um, yeah, that they will f finish reading it and just, it, despite the emotional aspect of the story, just feel this warm, cozy feeling once they get to the last page. Uh, I, I, I trust you. I trust you <laughs> and I'm, I'm so excited. And just here, let me see. Um, so, all right. Since you are a YA contemporary author, and this is going to be an interesting conversation because that's both of us. What are your top three YA contemporary books of all time and why? So it's so hard to choose. I, I was thinking about this question earlier and I was trying to come up with a list. I forget where I put my little list. Um, it's so hard to choose, but I came up with at least two that just come to mind like all time favorites. The first is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I, I feel like I read book. this book, I, it's amazing. And I feel like I read this book um, like many, many years ago when I felt like YA was mostly fantasy. And when YA, you know, we had The Hunger Games and Twilight and we had um, Divergence and just, it was very fantasy focused. And I think The Fault in Our Stars was one of the first um, YA contemporaries that I read that just showed like a story that was just deeply emotional and that uh, had a more serious tone. Um, and I just really, really loved that. It just introduced me to contemporary books in general. Um, and also The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which I think is just a masterpiece. Um, I love authors who are able to tackle difficult subjects in a way that feels accessible and in a way that feels just deeply emotional and the hate you give is just such an incredible book um in terms of like books a book that well i'm rereading this i'm not reading this for the first time but it's furia by jamile sayez mendez which i also adore um this one came out last september and i i read it then and i loved it and now i'm just rereading it just because i i love it so much yeah. um those are a few faves how about you which ones for which me, ones are yours honestly <laughs> Honestly, a, well, one of them that completely changed the gamut for me, and I have three copies of it in various states of disarray, okay. um, is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Because before that, I hadn't read why contemporary romance at all. It, it wasn't my thing at all. And I was like, well, whatever. It's a romance. Booktube is obsessed with it. This was back in like 2010. So it was when Booktube was even was, was small. Now it's grown exponentially. But as someone who's been in Booktube since, like, I want to say... Oh, I'm showing my age, but I think it's like when I was when I was like 19 and I'm 30 now. So it, oh, it wow. was, it's been a long time. It's been a it's been long, a long you've time. been here. Yeah, yeah very a really long, long time. time. I'll cross various channels, but like I remember people reading it and the French Kiss and being obsessed with it and me being like, I'm never going to read this, whatever, blah. And then I would even tell my friend, I'm like, look, just tell me the twist because, quote, I'm not going to read it. I read it. And I fell in love and that changed everything for me because if it wasn't for Anna and the French Kiss, I, I, I don't know if I would be writing YA contemporary romance at all. Like I genuinely have no, because it, it taught me how, how that's structured and like how you can build upon a relationship. And it's, I've read it for the first time in a number of years when I got my, um, 10th anniversary collector's edition which is which is like has like a ribbon bookmark and sprayed edges and gold foil and is gorgeous and it and i've read it again i'm like this is still so good and i'm so grateful i love those kinds of books that me. just like stick with just, you and like yeah. you can reread them even like years later and just fall in love with them all mm -hmm. over again i love yeah. those kinds it's of like books. it's like coming home in a way where i'm just like okay, yeah. it's, like, it's my go-to happy book where i'm like do i need a book where i know if things are going to be okay and I know these characters like the back of my hand. So are they going to be okay? And yeah. then I'm like, okay, let's, let's go. Cause there's a scene at the end on top of the Notre Dame that is one of my favorite scenes in fiction period at all. And I'm just like, I, I, I it's still one of my favorite scenes in fiction to this day. And it's been a number wow. of years at this point, but um, the other one would be, and these are in no particular order, but um, also a Cuban girl's got the TN tomorrow by Laura Taylor and Amy beautiful 
utterly gorgeous because it's I have not read it and it's on my <gasps> list and I have oh, not gotten to it yet. Oh, you are in I'm sorry. for such a treat. Oh I've heard my God. what I've heard is that this book is like a warm hug. Like mm-hmm. that's how I've heard yeah. people describe it. And yeah. I'm so so excited to read it. It is so good because it's it's so lovely and so warm and so calming and it blends together so many aspects of Leela and Orion's cultures because there's a whole subplot of Orion. He's like the son of this tea shop owner, which is the most English thing I've ever said in my entire life. <laughs> and, he, and he has this obsession with wanting to find Leela's favorite tea. And throughout the book, they figure out what her favorite tea is. And it's three simple words and those three simple words, after they figure out what her favorite tea is, Laura Taylor Namey proceeded to undo me. And I was just like, <laughs> like utterly I can't beautiful. Wait. It is amazing. I would highly recommend doing what I did, where um, read it during Christmas, read it around Christmas time. Even though the book okay. is Christmas, read it around Christmas time. But put on um, like Christmas cafe ambiance from, I think, I want to say it's like... I, I forget. I, I know I can find it, so I'll send a link to you on YouTube. But it's um, it's this it's this person who makes ambiance videos on YouTube, and he made a Christmas ambiance one. So you have but in a cafe. So you have okay. a cafe with Christmas music in the background, and also just general calm noises of the outside from the, from beyond the windows of the cafe, playing that and reading a Cuban girl's got to stand tomorrow. Lovely. That sounds incredible. Just lovely. Highly recommend it. Also, <laughs> I also I would be remiss if I did not discuss today, tonight, tomorrow by Rachel and Solomon. I full disclosure, I was on her street. T- I'm on her street team, so I got to read that <laughs> book in January before it came out last year, and I I was just completely enamored. I remember reading that book and just. I, was, I I couldn't read it on my phone. So I was reading it on the Kindle from my computer. I didn't have a Kindle at the time. And I was reading it. And as I was re- as I read it and I got to certain points, I remember my eyes were wet. I had like I was banging the armrests of my chair because I'm like, it's fine. Like this has finally happened. Like, thank God, because it, it's just so it's so good. Rachel is fantastic. And I love Tonight Santa Tomorrow so, 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 so much. So Honestly, if you haven't read Today Night Tomorrow, highly recommend. It's I it, need to I need to read it. So good. So good. So good. So good. So <laughs> good. And let me see what else we have. Mm, okay. So now for a bonus question. What are some upcoming YA releases that you're looking forward to? Oh my gosh, there are so many. Um, I would say at the top of my list, um, no particular order because there are too many. Um, Jay's Gay Agenda by Jason June. I have an arc of that. I do. <gasps> oh my god, have you read it? No, not yet. Go on, go. I think it's I think it's still available for requests. So see if you can get on the neck alley and request. I'll request it a hundred percent. I'm my issue these days is just like too many books to read and not mm-hmm. enough time, especially with like publication coming up and like book two deadlines. But I can't wait. Like I'm telling you, I'm so excited for when I deliver my book two draft. I think it's due like sometime in May. So a month ish from now. And then I'm going to read all of the books. I'm so excited. But um, that one I'm super excited about. I'm super excited about Sisters of the Snake by Serena and Sasha Nanwa, um, which I I love reading fantasy. I've never written um, a fantasy myself. Maybe I will one day, but I'm so, so excited about this one. It's about twin sisters and they were separated and they one of them ends up being a princess and one of them ends up being a thief and it just sounds incredible um also blood like magic by lasalle sambry another fantasy which is coming in june i'm super excited about 1500 miles from the sun by johnny garcavilla which i keep you keep telling me about and everyone keeps telling me about yes i do (laughs) i'm so excited I'm reading it right now. It's in my Kindle right here. Here, I'll because it has stickers on it, so it's cute. But here, like I'm reading this on my Kindle right now. Oh my gosh, I love that! Adorable, adorable, yeah. adorable. <laughs> and 1500 miles from the sun, Johnny, my friend. You, you, 
I've already yelled at you in DMs, my friend. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> and, like, and, and I'm not even done with it. Like, I'm not even at the point where Jules and Matt have physically met each other. And I know when they do, I because I told Johnny, I said, when they meet, I'm just going to FaceTime you and I'm going to be sobbing openly. <laughs> <laughs> and Johnny just goes, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's I love that. Cool. And Brittany says she has an arc of blood like magic. I am jealous. I of have you. one too. I, I started it already. I'm jealous. I'm also jealous of Brittany because she read Counting Down With You um, by Tashi Boyan earlier. And I was like, I and she tabbed it up. Like everything is like it's it's just a <laughs> rainbow of tabs all, all on the arc. And I'm like, I I'm ready. Because they, yeah. <laughs> the pre the pre order goodies for that, beautiful, beautiful. I love them, and I I I know I, I pre ordered it from Books of Wonder, which just makes me happy because they're my favorite indie in the world, and they're amazing. I just love them so much. But anyway, I think me and you should just continue talking while we ha wait for people. If anyone has any questions, just honestly post them here, and I'll highlight them, and then Daniel can answer them. But yeah. like, just as far as as far as 1500 miles from the sun you're, you're not ready <laughs> okay i don't think anything can prepare me i've heard so much about it and i still don't feel ready <laughs> it's amazing and i am i speaking of books that i'm not ready for i'm not ready for indivisible because after reading the, after reading the 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 um the preview for on amazon i'm like okay like this already is beautiful just oh, gorgeous you. you're welcome and and like <laughs> any book set in new york city already has my heart just by association because it's like yeah, it's, totally. it was when i read um when i read felix ever after by case and calendar mm. it's 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 june in new york city so it's pride month in new york city and it was around the time where i read it during pride month actually and it was it was just utterly gorgeous and freeing and affirming and Yet it, I, I, because I, I haven't been in the city since like I want to say yeah in a while a long time like since yeah. April of oh wow no not April um February of I want to say oh, wow like, of twenty twenty I want to say so I I had I've been missing the city I miss it every day and totally. then when I read Felix I was like okay this is like it yeah, brings you back. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah you totally. Can, you can because it's New York in the summer. New York in the mm -hmm. summer. It don't come here in the summer. Just, just, just take it from <laughs> us. Don't come here in the summer, especially in May. May essentially is an oven. It, 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 it's it's <laughs> insanely hot. Yeah, it's insanely hot. It's humid, and it's, it's just, just this whole Felix was coming home in a way because as someone who has only recently come out publicly as asexual, just reading reading more queer books is just such a bomb to my soul. And it's just mm -hmm. like, I understand, like I understand. Cause like growing up, I didn't, you, you didn't have the word for, for be for what being ace was. You, you, didn't, totally. you didn't just have the word. And then growing, which is why I'm so happy that the landscape of literature, especially YA is changing because as someone who is not only you know, I, I'm I'm in grad school for for YA book publishing. For, I'm in grad school for book publishing, but specifically going into children's book marketing. That's basically where I want to go. So it's being able to get in there and just have these books get out there for teenagers who need them. Yeah, queer teenagers, disabled teenagers, any other marginalized group of teenagers totally. that haven't seen themselves. That's going to be huge. And being a part of that, hopefully on both sides, is just it's it's something that my life has revolved around the publishing industry for so long. And yeah, it's so exhausting, but it's also just so rewarding because but it's the sort of quiet kind of reward where you're where, where you just know it makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And that's really important. And Brittany said what um she commented seeing yourself in a book is so important so i oh, so this, as a bonus question a bonus bonus question what was the first time you saw yourself in a book 
I think the first time I ever saw a queer Latino character was in Adam Silver's work, which is, I mean, I was already, I think, in college by that time. And I mean, it is such a cathartic experience and it's such a special moment um, to find yourself even like on a bookshelf um, and in the pages of a story. But I, I do wish that I had had that earlier in life that I'd been able, you know, as a 10, well, yeah, as a 10 year old, 12 year old, as a teenager that I had access to that experience and to that mirror in literature. And like you said, it makes me so happy. There's still a lot of work to be done, but it makes me happy that at least today, teenagers and, and young kids are able to go into a bookstore and find more options that reflect their identities and that help them understand themselves better. I think that is super, super special. Fantastic. And so Brittany, as a follow-up, what's your favorite Adam Silvera book? They both die at the end. And actually, let me tell you a funny thing about that mm-hmm. book, which is that the illustrator that drew that cover, which is one of my all-time favorite covers, is the same illustrator who drew the cover for Indivisible. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, I love it so much. Person. I love how that happens. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah same that illustrator. I just adore it. Because now that I'm thinking about it, the cover of They Both Die at the End has the same sort of navy blue silhouette as Indivisible. Yeah. And, and like... I haven't read the both at the end yet, mainly because I, I'm not I'm not ready. Like, <laughs> I, like I know I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready at all, and it, because it's I know it's going to be amazing, but am I ready for that? No. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, I want <laughs> to be, especially because I I did get it um, on Audible when I back when I had an mm. an Audible membership because. I'm a huge anime fan, so obviously, if voice, if voice actors that I'm familiar with do audiobooks, I'm like, here, let me. Obviously, I, I obviously you can voice act, which is part of of being an audiobook narrator. Yeah. So let me. So let's let me. Say, and I think Robbie Damon, I want to say, plays. I want to say Mateo. I think I think he does in the audiobook. I, I didn't listen to. I or, read it. I didn't listen yeah. to the audiobook. Either that or he either plays Mateo or, or no, no, he plays, no, he plays Mateo. He does no, he plays Mateo. Cause I'm just remembering like a little bit of his voice and it's, I, I know I will eventually be ready for it. I'm just not sure when. And yeah, because it's, yeah. Th- yeah. See, that's why I'm, I'm scared of reading the book we'll at the end because I know like, obviously they're going to die. Like, the, like the Looper is in shadows. Like, is there shadow? Beautiful design, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, it, so you obviously know. Here's here's how it's going to end. And the entire time you're thinking, please, yeah. please <laughs> let them yeah. somehow figure out how to get around this. <laughs> yeah. That's just not how any of it works at all. But eventually, I know I'll be ready for it. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm because it's a oh, week. Thank you. It's a week. It's gonna. It, I'm just. I can't wait until I'm fully vaccinated to go into a Barnes and Noble and to find Indivisible because especially Thank because you. we talked about this previously, your last name begins with A, so I'm not going to yeah. have to look very far. And <laughs> like it, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited because I'll be fully. Va- I'm getting my last vaccine on Sunday, so I'll be fully vaccinated oh, nice. on the 16th, which means I can go into a bookstore because I haven't even been in a bookstore in forever because of the pandemic i miss bookstore so, so much me too it because it's just it just there's just this calmness that you get there that you don't get anywhere else and i I'm agree 100 so for for as people get vaccinated i'm so excited and just so i'm so excited for you to eventually walk into a bookstore and <laughs> be indivisible because wow. like it's going to be this huge defining moment for you. Cause I, I, I remember when you got your arcs and how excited you were, just how earnest you were <laughs> and when you got your finished copies, like what, like a week and a half ago or something. Yeah. It, you, it was. Yeah. Recently. Like, it's like, you were just like the look of utter joy on your face <laughs> is just, it's something that honestly, I, I hope that you know that it resonates with everyone in this community because it's it's something that that because when when i see books that i'm so excited to get released 
it it's this really wonderful feeling of okay, finally I can go read it. But when it's friends, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like it's it's just like, yeah. I'm I'm so excited for you, and I can't Thank wait you. to pick up Indivisible. It's like my my copy's coming in the mail to me, but I can't wait to go into a bookstore and see it. It's going to be amazing. I I'm. I'm so excited for you. It's, Thank you. It's just, I, so I, like, I, <laughs> it's just like, like when, when, obviously there's the video of you getting your copies and opening them up, but like when you got the box and you opened them, like what was all of your thoughts running through? Like what was happening? Well, with, with the, with the arts, I, I mean, it was a moment that I dreamt of first, so long to like seeing my book like in like just as a book um that was incredible and I was just trying to make sense of it I was just like flipping through the pages and just trying to make sense of like oh my god it it really is a book it feels like a book it looks like a book um and I don't know it was just just such a I don't know like very exciting moment and then with the final copies I I think like when I picked the them up like the first thing i i started thinking of and like obsessing over was like how the cover feels because it's it's well like there's a shiny like detail mm -hmm. <laughs> um and then it's like um it's like soft touch so it's like it's it's like almost velvety which feels so nice and i was like i couldn't stop watching the cover and it's i don't know there's something just so so different and so special about seeing it in its final form and just the heavy hardcover just thinking like I wrote this like so many nights that I spent like working on this book and all the work that went into it it's it's just it's wild to see it all come down to this one little like thing like yeah. one little book nice I'm so excited for you and thank it, you so much and I know and I know people are just so excited for you too. It's good. Thank it's you. Just because, like, it's here. It's happening in a week. You, it's it's this amazing, amazing thing. And on your release day, like, regardless of how crazy it is, just think about how, like, what you've done because what you've done is is huge. And you. it's you have to just take a second to even just sit down. And just have your book on your lap and just like hold your book like it's a puppy. And, and just, <laughs> just, just, just Melissa, you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> don't worry. It's because I'm I'm almost there myself. So if we cry together, it's gonna don't worry. It's gonna be cathartic. Cause it's it <laughs> just it's amazing because like because going back to how we talked about community, it's it's just like we're all experiencing things in different ways and different th but that doesn't mean that we all don't are like we like I don't know what I'm saying but like we don't like we don't hope or we don't like want anything less for our friends than than them to realize totally. their dreams it's like and the fact we're... that it's happening for you and you have it like the like it's <laughs> <laughs> but I I totally hear what you're saying it's like we all have this big dream and just watching it happen for for your friends is so so special and it can be almost as special sometimes as having it happen to you and just being able to celebrate with people it's it's so incredibly so incredibly special and it's one of the best parts of the publishing journey too just you know connecting with the authors and i mean i i keep thinking of like my friends and family who are outside of publishing and they're like oh my god you know the author of this book and i'm like yeah they're my friend <laughs> it's like and it's so awesome it's so awesome that we got to that we got to do this and that we got to support one another mm -hmm. it is it definitely is because I, I remember like i think when like i'm at the point um, with my life revolving around publishing how it is where I would just like say like tell my mom oh yeah my friend's book is coming out next week and she she's not even like oh really she she, she just carries on the conversation as if that's just <laughs> yeah it's like a fact of life just like <laughs> yeah just just okay just that nah, like because even because because since my life revolves around publishing like in the fall I'm going to be in New York City one day a week like staying overnight one day a week because of grad school because my mm. grad school one of my my children's book publishing class it is from 6 p.m to 8 45 and I'm oh, like wow. you can't expect me to get to a expect 
to get back to Grand Central. Yeah. In a reasonable amount of yeah, time and like, not be home by midnight. So no, yeah, I'm staying 100%. in the city one night a week. That in, makes in total sense. And I'm just like, I'm as excited as I am. I'm like, this is what I'm doing because my life revolves <laughs> around the publishing industry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh that'll be God. so exciting i am excited but and kara did comment a little bit up or she's she's left now because she needs to go rest but he said hasn't that mcdonald's closed now i'm pretty positive it has because of covid which i is, remember uh, they renovated it I, I, I think a few years ago yeah, it went through a big renovation too. and and i don't know if it's still open i haven't i haven't been either in like over a year yeah i i think that they, that it may have closed i'm not really sure but like, I know that people were worried about movie theaters closing, especially down there. But now movie theaters are reopening, thank God. Because, like, yeah, even if it's even if they're in the middle of Times Square, movie theaters are still needed. Like, if you, yeah. it, it's just this experience that we never really thought you of can't, yeah. at all. Like, oh, you can't go to the movies. It's, no, we, we can't go to the movies. <laughs> like, until we're fully vaccinated, it's, yeah, it, it's safety precautions. But if totally. you want to be and there's nothing, safe, get vaccinated. There's nothing like the feeling of just being in a movie theater. Yeah. Like, that is just movie so Movie theater special. popcorn, it, 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 it's one of my favorite foods. Like it's, Yeah, I love, oh my God, same. <laughs> it, it's, and because... It's, and especially now, I'm showing my age too. But like when the touch, the touch screens for the sodas now, I'm just like, that's that's a relatively new thing. And like I miss that. <laughs> like it's weird. There's just things that the pandemic has altered that we miss. And one of those things apparently is just the soda fountains in movies, which is and movies and popcorn, <laughs> which is just. Mm. I miss like, that so I'm, much. Yeah, I miss it too. And I'm, but anyway, beyond movies, the only connection to which is because the movie theater I go to is in Times Square. I know, sandwiched in Broadway, <laughs> I go to a movie theater in Times Square, but it's, <laughs> but it, it's um, like, I have to like, I think like cr cross under the new Amsterdam theaters, basically cross under the huge display for Aladdin to go to the movie. Mm, <laughs> I know just, exactly which one you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so it's, but anyway, since let's close down now with you, saying anything else you want to say about Indivisible. So go on. Well, I just, I just really, really hope that this book will find readers and that, um, I don't know, I, that it helps people feel something. And most, mo more than that, like just feel inspired and feel emotional and feel less alone. And I'm so, so, so grateful to be able to share this book in one week. And I'm so grateful to you, Melissa, for, all your friendship and kindness and for having me today. And I, I just, I'm grateful. That's, that's about it. <laughs> awesome. And, um, and so Brittany is probably the first person to say, to tell this to you, but happy early. Oh, thank you. So, thank you so much. I'm, I'm again, just the feeling is completely mutual because we, I don't even know like when we officially like, even connected but we did and then like this past sunday we went on zoom so it wouldn't be this awkward oh here's our first time talking yeah to totally and it's uh, and like for a week we talked for nearly two hours and it was just so cathartic and like the entire yeah. day i'm just thinking about like how soul filling it was because i'm just like here's someone who like is eight hours from me but who i wouldn't have met otherwise if it weren't for having the writing community that's on Twitter and yeah. the fact that we get to celebrate you and have our friendship is just so so special to me and I'm so excited for you and y'all make you. sure you go pre-order Indivisible add it to Goodreads it comes out in one week on hey. May 4th you just go go read the look inside <sighs> preview on Amazon and you will be immediately captivated. And then go and pre order <laughs> it, preferably from your local indie bookstore at bookshop.org, which a portion of the proceeds supports local independent bookstores to you. And I believe you can also choose which bookstore that you are supporting with your purchase because independent bookstores are the heartbeats of our communities. So they need to yep. be funded as much as they possibly can. And, yep. and hang on, I'm just straggling on here. So you have. You, you you have book launch plans. So do you want to yeah. 
advertise those a little bit? Yes, of course. So you can find all the details at danielailman.com slash event. Um, there's going to be three different chats uh, on three different days, um, all with incredible bookshops, um, with Slab Day, uh, with Books of Wonder, and with Books and Books. And it's going to be super fun. You can pre-order the book from either of these and from any of these. And if you pre-order from Glad Day, you will get a signed copy. And if you, pre but that one is based in Canada. So I don't know how shipping works for them, but you can look into it. I think they do ship across North America. And if you pre-order from Books and Books and Books of Wonder, you can get a signed book plate. So it would mean so much to me if you can support me and those bookstores. And I'm so, so, so excited. Awesome. And thank you for being here, Daniel. And thank, thank all you. of y'all for coming to hang out. And yeah, we will hopefully see you soon. I am going to be doing um, another interview on May. Let me check. It's, I want to say it's May 31st, I want to say. Watch me not understand dates. At I was going to say um, May 29th. I thought oh, I saw, but I, I, uh, I don't uh, really remember. May 31st, actually. I'll be doing oh, wow, an okay. interview hey. with, um, uh, uh, with Johnny Garzavia, the aforementioned Johnny Garzavia. Yeah, I'm so excited for that. For their upcoming debut, 1,500 Miles from the Sun. So make sure you come back for that. Make sure you pre-order Daniel's book. Make sure you order it and support it because it's going to be incredible. I'm so, so Thank proud you. of you and so, so <laughs> grateful for this to have happened. And anyway, yeah, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome.